Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert. So some news hot off the press. Our friends at Universal Audio have just released not one, but two new audio interfaces in their Apollo X range. First one is the Apollo Twin X, bringing the Apollo Twin up to the same sort of spec and resolution as these lovely babies here, the Apollo X range. A full lineage of Apollo X if you will. The next interface I have here next to me, this is the Apollo X4, a pumped up on steroids version of the Apollo Twin with four, yes, four Unison mic pre's. We also have three sets of stereo outputs for monitors on the X4. Really very nice. You can switch between three different sets of stereo monitors. Lovely stuff. There's also a few little workflow tweaks and some nice enhancements that have been done behind the scenes in the UAD2 software. That's 9.10.1. So this video is a kind of technical UAD catch up as much as it is a review of the Apollo X4. But there's a few things I'd like to show you, a few tips and tricks that I've picked up about some specific UAD plugins and some of the new workflow enhancements they've built in to the new UAD software. So here we are hovering over the Apollo X4. Now to any of you who've used an Apollo Twin before, this is a fairly similar layout. They've just added a couple of extra goodies in the form of two extra preamps. So the preamp button, I can cycle through my four different mic pre's. Channel one at the moment, I have a guitar cable plugged in, so it's giving me the high Z input. I've got my input selector, high pass filter, 48 volt phantom power, pad switch, phase invert, and I can also link the two channels for stereo operation. Very, very handy. On the monitor side of things, I have my main monitor outputs, headphone output number one and headphone output number two. Yes, there's two sets of headphone outputs down here that are independently configurable using the console software. Around the front, we have our two high Z instrument inputs, two outputs for headphones. You'll also notice this louvering, these channels that have been cut into the front and the sides and the back of both the Apollo X4 and the Apollo Twin X. This is for ventilation. There's a lot going on inside these pieces now, and it does get quite warm, but the whole thing is basically a nice big aluminum heat sink. Um, so there's no fans in there, no extra noise, nothing to annoy you in the studio. Now it's worth saying that the Apollo X4 and the Apollo Twin X, like the Apollo Twin before it, can be used as your master system controller. So your master volume, your talk back, and they can be used to enhance and control your Apollo X or your Apollo Generation 2 rig. So around the back is where things start to look a little bit more different. We now have four of those lovely Universal Audio Unison preamps on XLR Combi Jacks, three sets of stereo outputs, a main monitor pair, then line out one and two, three and four. These can be just normal line outs or they can be configured to be stereo outputs for extra sets of monitors. The all important Thunderbolt 3 connector, the Apollo X4 and the Twin X are both Thunderbolt 3 devices, which is really rather cool. The locking power supply connection, optical IO, and the power switch. Although it's not the sexiest thing to talk about in a review, the power supply for the X4 has taken a serious upgrade. It now means we get some serious voltage and some serious current where it's required. So here I am over on my Mac in the Universal Audio console, and you can see on this first channel where I have my guitar plugged in, I've got the Tube Screamer, the Fender 55 Deluxe, the UA175B compressor, Studer A800 tape, and the Cooper Time Cube. I've also got the rather lovely and incredibly thirsty Capital Chambers installed on one of my auxiliaries. Now you're probably thinking, hang on, how's he got Capital Chambers 55 Deluxe, which are both fairly heavy lifting plugins, working on a quad? Well, the answer is I'm using a thing called channel DSP pairing. Now, this does sacrifice your virtual channels, but to be honest, in the world of modern DAWs and modern computers, I very rarely find that I use virtual channels. I end up monitoring directly from Pro Tools and the latency is non-existent which means you can sacrifice your virtual channels for DSP pairs. Now, what's a DSP pair, I hear you ask? A DSP pair is a way to make effectively more than one DSP chip 
operate per channel, meaning we can share the DSP load across two chips for one channel, which is really very handy. Now, to be honest, I normally like to keep at least one pair of virtual channels. So three DSP pairs, two virtual channels seems absolutely ideal meaning I can run lots of lovely heavy lifting plugins like the Fender 55 Deluxe. Now I've put a link to Universal Audio's channel DSP pairing video over in the main Production Expert article. So do make sure you head over to the main Production Expert site and check out all the other goodies around this X4 and Twin X launch. So I hope you enjoyed that very brief look at the new Apollo X4 and have picked up some tips and tricks along the way about working with the UAD2 software. Now you're going to see this thing a lot more in some videos we've got coming soon. I've been working with an artist that we've kind of put a, a project together with, shall we say. More on that soon. But for now, my name is James Ivey and I'll see you again very soon for some more Gear Talk.